while since I've seen a movie that makes me feel like I'm actually watching a movie, and No One Will Save You is actually one of those movies. It is so simple, and I love the fact that you don't get any talking in this whatsoever, because you don't need it. All you need is your eyes and definitely your ears. Why are you watering the part that doesn't need to be watered? Pretty sure that grass is dead. <laughs> I don't think it needs water. But here's our first clue of things going downhill. Crop duster. I mean, crop circle. What the frick is a crop duster? Hold on. Watching this poor woman having to force herself to smile and interact people is one of the most painful things. I don't even know why she tries and I'm thinking to myself, people hate her for a reason. You don't live in a small town like this and everybody shuns you unless you killed one of their children via a DUI or something. Denied. Uh, try as she may, Brent hides from the cops and finds it anxiety inducing just to socialize or be out there with people. She has a legitimate reason why she's doing this, but I feel for her so badly. I already feel that day to day. So it feels so good having land. And that's the wonderful thing about where she lives. She has a big enough lot that she can be away from people if need be and the tree is blocking the road. So we see that she's mourning her mom, Sarah Adams. We also see that she tries to talk to the people at the funeral and she's very awkward around them. Nobody cares. Everyone's like, bitch, please keep walking. She gets exceedingly terrified when she sees the chief and his wife. By this time, I've already put two and two together. Somehow, she accidentally killed their freaking kid through negligence. I'm calling it right now. We know that the person's name is Maud because she's constantly writing to this person and she says how much she misses them and that she saw her parents, the chief and his wife. Oh, Lord have mercy. You know how much worse it is that you killed the police officer chief's kid? Oh, my God. I just she move from that freaking town. <laughs> I mean, with the economy and stuff like that, I can't even blame her. Loser. Okay. Who is this guy? Discount Dollar Tree freaking Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. I was gonna say he's a bit of an asshole for doing that, but then again, if this is a small town, he probably knows who she is and does not give one two titties. My package! So while she's dancing and having fun by herself because she got her new package, it's a new dolly house thing, which she's really into. Her only friend, or the only person she seems to interact with socially, is her dead friend who cannot hear her. Man, she's living the introvert's dream, man. Like, looking at this, I would not mind. Mind. This is how I actually envision my life. And I know a lot of you are going to be like, Kevin Samuels, die alone, get a cat and a dog. I'm like, that's not actually so bad, you know, for people like me. I know people like my dad would probably make fun of me and say I'm freaking weird. But you don't understand. For people like us who are heavily introverted like that, this is our ideal dream. We are fine like this. We will die old and alone with a dog and be completely fine. As long as we have peace away from people and land and we will sit there and just bask in it. Clearly, she's not completely enjoying it because she's also accompanied by her grief. And we know she did something because she says, I don't think I'll ever forgive myself. She looks like that girl from American Gods, one that's always calling her boyfriend puppy for some unknown reason. Oh my God, look at that puppy. Look at that puppy. Oh my God, it's a cute fuck about him. Every single in my life, we have to get a puppy. Can I please get a puppy? You can get a puppy. Yeah, but that puppy is very serious. I'm so serious. <laughs> oh my God, I have that puppy. No, no. Poor Maud, look, you killed her. Can you imagine, though? Look, she's practically dead inside already. Anyway, all's well, and there's another night for Bryn. And then some weird noises are heard in the distance. I'm telling you, the sound design in this movie is exquisite. I remember when I watched the trailer for the first time, and I couldn't even finish it. So I was like, no, I, my, my blood pressure was spiking. <laughs> How did that not wake her up? Does anyone else wake up when you just feel somebody looking at you or you feel something enter the room or the temperature changes or the light comes on where there's like fire behind your freaking eyelids? Unless you took a pill to go to sleep. How are you still sleeping? Yeah, so let's not leave our window open in the middle of the night where freaking things and hawks can come through your window and peck your freaking private part to death. Let's not do that when the hospital is like 30 minutes away and everyone in town hates you and the police probably won't answer your calls. You know what I mean? So after seeing that is a trash can that's turned over, she decides to go downstairs and then sees that her door is open. And I'm sorry, from that point on, I am jumping out of the window of the second floor of the house and breaking my freaking ankles to get away from there. Oh. Bro, I would have been out there so freaking fast, my guy. I, mm-mm, nope.
No, 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 no. All of it, just no. Nope. she decided at that moment that she wanted to call the cops their whole relationship or lack thereof pretty sure that their response would also be nope there's a game of freaking cat and mouse or <laughs> my toes can turn into hands and walk on their tips <laughs> i don't know what the point of like half of the stuff that happens with these aliens feels like it's just convenience sake like the alien is like okay i'm gonna land on my feet and then just uh walk on my tippy fingers for no freaking reason no. If there is a freaking washing machine inside the house, I will go inside there. No, that thing locks. I'll go inside the dryer. Living out in this situation, I would think she has a firearm or something, because that would make sense. Unless, of course, she's forbidden from having one, but I don't know why. I mean, I guess she killed someone, so. Freaking curling iron is not the weapon of choice, I would believe, is good enough. You couldn't find anything better than that. I mean, you can't even have it on. It needs to be plugged in. What, what are you doing? Are you gonna shove it up its gray ass? Not today. she's out of her depth and it knows she's in the house and it knows it's got her dead to rights what are you ever going to do at this point it knows it's playing with her wow <laughs> that is a whole lot of head to stab oh. now while this thing is dying in front of her like in shock and awe that she has killed it I'm there thinking to myself, this person has been isolated for a very long time. Wouldn't it be weird if she was actually going crazy and the people or the things that she sees coming up to visit her right now are actually her friends and family, but she's seeing them as aliens and she doesn't realize that they're not and she's killing them one by one? That would be awful. Anyway, the thing is like, okay, I'm gonna get some before I finally die. Oh no, come back. She stays the whole morning and I thought it was gonna all be a dream, but no, the thing is still there lying down with the thing stabbed inside of its brain. Would you look at that? All of it was real. It wasn't a dream. The phones don't work, water still works, but no electricity. The car doesn't work either, which instantly tells us that this is not probably only happening to her. She does a makeshift door to hide the body, and she decides to go into town, but then she sees the mailman's truck overturn. There's a crop circle, or several, on that guy's lawn as well, the one that wouldn't say hello to her. She goes into town, everyone's looking at her weird. Now this is where the movie kind of loses me, because understandably, everybody in town hates her. We all know that, like, oh, it's you, the freaking killer. And who does she have to go to to explain that she was just attacked by a bunch of aliens? The chief and his wife. Because, you know, this is above her now. This is not one of those situations where she needs help. <laughs> this, this is a situation where everybody needs help now. Including the mailman whose truck was overturned and we don't know what happened to it. <sighs> mm. <laughs> the father's like, okay, even that's a little bit much. But you also can't blame the mom, because, you know, the people at the station are like, whatever, is, is what it is. And then she leaves! Like, bro, what are you doing? What? I, look, okay, something is clearly wrong with her, because as much as you have anxiety, something is clearly wrong. It's not just a you thing. Somebody needs help. The mailman needs help. What happened to him? No, hey, I'm sorry that this happened, but I need help. Or write it or something. Maybe she doesn't have the ability to talk or something, but something? Really? I do not want to believe that this character is this stupid. So people are automatically going to believe, oh, well, she must be on the spectrum like people always do. Just kind of a low-key way of insulting people who are autistic. Because what are you saying? Like, all people who are autistic are freaking stupid and don't have the ability to communicate properly? From what we know, and you'll see that later, she had the ability to communicate. It didn't play that up like they do in most movies. So no reason, no reason she could have also... You, were, you have a phone to speak on the phone. Like, what in the world? We see a mural of Maud. The whole town knows her and knows what happened. So she's like, you know what? The best thing I could do right now, get a ticket and hop on a freaking bus. A bus that the mailman is also on. And leave. Leave all my belongings behind. Leave the freaking alien on my floor. And not even tell anyone that there's somebody possibly in need of help. Although that person now is sitting right behind her. I'm announced to her though. Hey, how you doing, love mama? Let me whisper in your ear. What the fuck? Why is everybody walking over the chair?
chairs. This is like so inefficient. They're trying to be creepy, I get it, but like, seriously? This is so inefficient. Unless this is some kind of mating ritual. Look at the. <laughs> Ice Cube's uncle over here is like, the fuck is going on? It's safe to assume she's not going anywhere. Bitch, you ain't leaving! The camera work is actually pretty good because you can see that it's implied that no matter how much slower he walks, he could be walking in reverse and she could be running pell-mell as fast as Usain Bolt, he is going to catch her. Like that weird-ass movie it follows. <sighs> yeah, girl, I'm gonna swing my hips. My hips is coming for you, pocket bitch! What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Bro, the thing is following you. Why are you not going into the trees? Don't go into the oh, the church won't let you in, of course. Take it! Take it! Take it! Just like the It Follows movie, everyone decides that when they're running pell-mell from something that's actively trying to kill them, they're gonna stop and have a little bit of sentimental value time. It's her friend, Maud. And then there is the freaking hand of God stretching over the sky, and that's when she decides to Forrest Gump or Lion King run. You know, that run that they all do when they realize they're either, like, running for their lives or running back towards something they were avoiding. Run for it. <laughs> comes upon all of her neighbors stretching their hands to the sky. Like they're worshipping the Lord and there's like these freaking ew in their freaking throats. That is freaking nasty, bro. Time to go. Also, I don't understand the point of this part of the movie because there's this human hand or whatever the hell that's supposed to be stretching up to the clouds like a sha- What is going on? <laughs> This movie is freaking trippy, bro. It makes me believe that everything is a fever dream and it's all in her head. But her main character has no choice but to go back home. Her back is killing her. The alien is still there, all crumpled up like a freaking spider after you sprayed it with a pool full of rain. The horrific part about all this is the alien's still there, but something crawled out of it and that thing is no longer there. What? This is what it hit me. This movie is a ripoff of The Host, based on the YA novel. Look at the summary, it says, The Host is a 2008 science fiction rom romance. Oh yeah, that's right, it is. Of course it is. It's a Stephanie Meyer woman who made Twilight. The book is about Earth in a post-apocalyptic time being invaded by a parasitic alien race known as souls, and follows one soul's predicament when the consciousness of her human host refuses to give up her body. Since they deem the humans too violent to deserve the planet, when a soul is implanted into a host's body, the consciousness of the original owner is erased, leaving their memories and knowledge. But of course, the woman of this specific movie, she's a hard ass and she doesn't take over very easily. So now the aliens must cohabitate with her, or at least the alien inside her must, and everybody on the planet is being populated with these things inside of them. And guess what these things look like? They look like overgrown furry bacteria. That's what they look like with these big tentacle things, and they just look like freaking bacteria. Guess what this thing looks like? Overgrown freaking bacteria. It literally looks like the thing inside the cell, or the, the something that attacks the cell. It's basically the same movie, mixed with signs, and mixed with a quiet place. <laughs> I don't know why, but I like this alien. I call him tribal or or, or, or tribe, whatever. He's so freaking hot. I mean, wait, no, no. Wait, hold on. Okay, hold on, wait. What's the matter with you? It's the way, the way he's just sitting like a freaking anime character. Huh? Oh, <laughs> no. He's so freaking confused, like, you're interesting. And we know it's him because he has a V on his forehead. And I immediately think it's gonna turn into some freaking romance thing. I don't know why that's where my mind went. Maybe it's because I'm stupid, but it's usually where these things go. I mean, as a writer, knowing how people are, that's probably where I'd take it. For, pe for people who want that kind of thing, you know, because... Uh, oh, oh, okay. Don't act like you guys have never thought about it. Like, if the, 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 the freaking human annoy things invaded the earth, you, you wouldn't ask if it's possible, you know? Because... They're all dying anyway. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> he seems genuinely interested in her. Like, none of the other aliens had that attitude. He was like, huh, you're a weird one. You've already killed one of us. What's the matter with you? Hmm. You're, you're interesting. You're not like the other humans. We're gonna fuck. Um, no. 
I have seen this pattern countless times and this is usually where it ends up going, I swear to God. It's almost as though this was the structure of it before. Um, no it's not. Then we just descend into madness as different versions of aliens and Home Alone montages that are kind of hilarious occur throughout the movie and I'm just thinking to myself, what if, what if these are her family members that just can't get out my head? <laughs> What it did to the freaking pan, bro. It's funny how they also have all the stuff up their arsenal. They only use it every now and then. Like, they could have used it so many times before and they chose not to. It's just this absolutely brand new thing that all of a sudden they just pulled out their ass that they could have used, like, two scenes ago. And they make it apparent that, uh, yeah, the alien can go through it. Why is his mouth quivering? <laughs> oh, man, I just want to talk to you. <laughs> it's so stupid. He looks like those cats when the cats are meowing super fast. You know that- <laughs> Four big guys. They eat my ass just like apple pie. If then these aliens start doing these weird ass things that make no sense. And all I can gather is they're trying to communicate with this person. But it's not like they're trying to kill her or hurt her, which is very clear. Some of the creepy shots though in this freaking movie, bro. <laughs> this is just... <gasps> wow. Wild. time I would go into a very deep pond of water or lake or something and just not re-emerge. I would just inhale it because anything, any form of death would be better than this. You better find an animal's corpse to crawl into and hide. Okay, so... <laughs> don't wanna be afraid, I just don't want well, the mailman's finally caught back up to her, and it's time to give her as an offering the freaking spider leg alien thing. And then it does the same thing that the baby version of itself was doing in the house. I don't know what the frick it's supposed to be doing. Maybe it's like one of those, like, airplane guys. Like, they're telling them what's going on. Everybody let your... I guess the humans can still feel pain when they're in these freaking bodies. Or when the, the bacteria are inside them. Who knows? gets mad body for this one is way too damaged so it comes out of his mouth spider aliens like this is all your fault that's where we get the scene from the trailer and the sound engineering is just like the worst thing about this and by worst i mean most terrifying because it's the noises bro it's the noise and it's like a video game where each level there's just a different kind of boss this looks like something from out of an sp no not even scp it looks like something from out of a trevor henderson wallpaper like you know the stuff on platforms that people like trevor henderson would put up this looks like one of those things that you would see freaking nasty it falls off the roof on purpose after roaring <laughs> Just kidding! And because it's so stupid, it gets itself stuck in the freaking car. So, of course, she lights the car on fire and it dies. Remember the hot guy from the basement? I mean, the alien from the basement? Well, he never left because he's so fascinated with this girl. He sees all the letters that she wrote to Maud and she's hiding in the room somewhere. And he's like, ah, oh, this is fascinating. I wonder what makes her tick. Why is she so strong? She's a warrior like me. <laughs> Our children are gonna be amazing. Ew, ew, stop. That's nasty. He's not even worried about her at all. He's just like, um, excuse me. <laughs> what are you doing, bitch? Yo, I am so, I'm so weird. Y'all know I'm weird. I am totally, let me write this down. Let me write that on this idea. Don't worry, guys, relax. I'm just joking. Then we get the immersion broken, and you hear his bones breaking, and there is no reason for him to be moving like this, other than the people who created this movie want to skeeve people out. Like, it's so inefficient. Uh... We've seen in other situations where they have turned around completely normal, like normal things, but yet their bones must break in every other situation where we're about to have a chase happen. Why? Why? Why are the bones breaking? Is he rotting from the inside? <laughs> Aliens seem to be subduing her and toying with her on purpose. And then Tribe over here is like, look at you. You're so flat and fluffy at the same time. Goddamn girl. Well, I mean, now that you can't move, why don't we meet face to face? 
Oh my! Oh my God! What is happening? Now, usually I don't do this, but uh, go ahead and break them off with a little previews of the remix. Then I kid you not, something weird happens, and uh, he makes her do something to him, and he's like, "Oh shit! Oh my God! I'm kidding! I'm kidding!" Oh, you nasty ass bastard! You fucking nasty ass motherfucker! That's nasty, man! He's throwing up the bacteria out of his throat. That would have been an interesting turn though. That would have been a freaking weird ass turn for this movie to take. Would it be though? I mean, cause you know, everything that they've been setting up from here, it feels like there's like this undertone to it. Could just be me, but I don't know. Disgusting bro, nasty. Somewhere, some, somewhere. Somewhere deep down. There are people out there who think that this is like, you know, the most great thing ever. I don't know. That's kind of a limit to me. Like that, that's where the, mm-mm, but okay. Mm -mm. Apparently there's this matrix thing going on with people who are infected by these bacteria. I know that's not the plural of bacteria, it just sounds great. <laughs> Everything is peaceful. Rin's dolly house collection or model house collection is all back the way it was. She's happy. People are playing outside. And she sees her friend Maud, sort of. But Maud's older and she forgives herself. Well, not really. But she tells Maud how sorry she is about having done what she did to her. She removes the bacteria thing after they make a clone of her. And there are so many saucers, which means this is a worldwide thing that's happening, obviously. Unfortunately for Britain, her clone catches her and is like... <sighs> Insertion. This part's really sad because we find out that the clone version of her has stabbed her. Most likely she's going to die. <laughs> but we forget that this character is a badass and she had the cutting knife up her ass, I guess. She keeps pulling these items out of her imaginary inventory. We have no idea where those things are because you never see them in her pocket. She's clearly stashing them somewhere else on her person. Freaking human TARDIS over here. And she stabs the clone version of herself. This movie is also giving me a lot of Slither vibes, which I've seen recently. I think what really freaked me out about that movie is the fact that James Gunn did it. Despite her clone dying, Bryn feels horrible and comforts her clone as she dies. Then the spider thing is there and she gets caught. Because of course she does. On the spaceship, she has no control whatsoever. And we can see this is a different alien, actually several of them, wondering what the hell is up with this thing. Wallpaper though. In this scene, I half expected her to put her finger up as well. But this is where we get a rundown of exactly what happened, which you call from the beginning of the movie anyway, because people cannot hate you that much unless you took someone else's life negligently. Yep, policeman is crying. Yeah, something bad happened. Apparently, Bryn and Maude were fighting. I don't know what the case was. Maybe one of them slept with each other's boyfriend or something, which is like your best friends at that point. Why not share? I'm kidding. Not really. Well, I don't know. Hey, yo! Yo! Maude pushes her, because maybe Bryn did something fucked up, because, you know, it's Bryn. I wouldn't put it past her. And she's like, you pushed me, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the biggest freaking ass rock I have ever seen, and I am going to do the whole pimp slap thing and the, the, the messed up part is Maud felt bad about pushing Brynn and she was actually on her way to comfort her friend before her friend went all freaking psycho on her and was like, bow, you pushed me because, you know, we're having an argument and I probably did something to piss you off. So I'm going to freaking cave in your skull with a piece of the earth. I don't see, you know, that's something broken up there for someone to do something like that. I don't care. I understand exactly now why all the townspeople were upset. But then again, we're seeing everything from her point of view. So we have to root for this character. We've fallen in love with her and feel bad for her. Despite the fact that she's freaking crazy. I'm sorry. If a 12-year-old kid did that to your dog and caved in their skull or did that to your child, do you think they would deserve forgiveness? Even if she's showing remorse, something has to be broken in you as a person to do something like that. You're 12 years old, and while you're still developing, most 12-year-olds know that you don't take a weapon to someone's freaking head. Which makes me wonder, where was her father? Did her mom not teach her restraint? Of course, Ma dies because her skull got caved in. And this is when Bryn started riding her best friend. And she lived in total agony, grief, and guilt for her entire life. The guilt was eating her alive. Bryn wants her younger self to be forgiven. She's completely alienated from everyone and even herself. The aliens are like, this is the best freaking drama I have ever seen in my life. Damn, these humans are freaking lit with their entertainment, man. Glad we picked this planet. So then we see old dude from the base and he's like, see, I told you she's hot. I mean, I told you she's interesting. He's like, yeah, so uh, I don't think we should do anything to her. Hey, person up there who makes water ripple down our necks, what do you think should happen? What, in the shit box? So they all look at her and be like, it's okay, honey. You're like one of us. We completely understand. 
imprisoned. You're already living in a prison, so we don't need to imprison you. Besides, you're like really broken. Ain't nobody want to go inside that throat. They dump her back onto Earth because they don't need to do anything with her. She's already alienated and outcasted, so what would be the point? Which makes me wonder, if they're doing this with her, how many other people are crazy like this or just so broken that they don't want to use or they don't have to use because they're already living in crazy land that they just let walk the Earth? She's also docile when it comes to society, so they know that she won't be a problem. I guess they fix her too or something? The movie ends in the most electable way. We know that everything happened because she still has cuts to prove it. She actually is interacting with society now. And everyone likes her. Hey! Oh yeah, the guy who hated you. Hey, baby! Coming to the party later? She knows that all these people are aliens. She doesn't care because this is her heaven. Nobody knows who she is. They accept her for who she is. And she accepts them for who they are. It's perfect mutualism. Oh my. So just, just a question. Um. I know nobody can actually answer this, but I cannot be the only person who thinks about this stuff. People can say I'm weird because I'm the one who voices it, but you know y'all thinking it too. Um. So if people who are infected with the alien bacteria throat clingers mate with people who are not, but they're both in human bodies. You know what I mean? I think she always liked this guy, but because she was shunned by the community, he, they never stood a chance. But now, she gets to have the imposter, lobotomized version of him, and it's perfection, and she's completely okay with this. This is an introvert's dream. And it sounds chaotic and sociopathic, and it completely is. But in the realms of this story, it's completely fine. I'm in love with you. I don't care if you got that thing deep throating you at the moment and tickling your gloggle. I can be happy. This is perfection. Look at all of us dancing on carpets outside. Wait, are they even outside? I can't even tell. Why are there like 600 different rugs all? That is, oh my God. Oh my God, that is horrible on the eyes. What in the world? Why are there so many different colored rugs? Ew. Some friendly conversation by hometown. End scene, closed curtain, fade to black, whatnot. She's happy and kooky and everybody is too because they're freaking aliens. She's the happiest she's ever been because everyone is weird like her and she can be herself. You know, how long will that- is that a pregnant person over there? What the hell? Oh my god, I never thought about that. <gasps> oh no, what if? There's no jealousy too, like he's dancing with that woman, like, oh, you're gonna be next. And she's like, go for it, honey. And what happens to the baby when one of those things tickles and grabs your throat hole? Like, does the baby become automatically infected as well? There's so many questions I have, and it's not particularly about the ending of the movie, it's just about how this whole thing works. This movie was freaking awesome, bro. This was not where I expected it to go. I know you're all probably wondering, yeah, there are a million places you expected it to go that we all are glad it didn't, but seriously, still, even thinking all of that, this is not where I expect. Now, of course, there is a possibility that she could still be freaking crazy, and all of this could be in her head, and she's just hallucinating because she's been closed away for about how many years? What do you guys think? Also, this, this, this basement scene ticked me off because... There's a deep freezer right there. There's a deep freezer. That big old white box thing is a deep freezer. It's right there. You could have crawled in. Like, there's a million places you could hide. It will not completely shelter you. But you straight up sit beside the freaking deep freezer and decide you're not going to hide inside it. I was so done. I was like, what is the point? You, you literally, I don't even think it's hooked up. Whether it's hooked up or not, why would you not hide in there? It's clear these things can't see through solid objects. Bundle yourself up and hide in the deep freezer of all the places, good lord. You know what? They say that they, they usually the survival of the fittest people are usually like the most physically fit or spirited people. Doesn't have to mean they're the smartest. Anyway, this movie was awesome. So glad that I watched it. It's one of those movies I would watch again. And that's saying a lot because there's not a lot of movies like this that I would actually watch over again. I think it's more sci-fi surrealism in my opinion than it is a freaking horror. Even though it does have horror elements to it, the only part I would say legitimately is a sci-fi horror is the beginning part of it where there's the alien invasion thing. After that, it just becomes this weird sci-fi thriller type movie. Horror is not what I would call it. Call it. Did it market itself properly? Sure, I guess. It only used the first section of the movie, but I would call it more of a sci-fi thriller. Anyway, that was No One Will Save You, my beloved tribe. It was the best part about this whole movie. <laughs> Can you imagine if they were actually a couple and she rubbed him the wrong day, <laughs> the wrong way one day and she's like, you're such an asshole. And he's like, did you make my dinner, bitch? <laughs> and he throws her through the freaking drywall and then they both levitate and start doing things. Never mind. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to end the video there. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi, you ask.
Well, you didn't ask, but whatever, I answered anyway.